Welcome back, Wood Turners. Um, we got something in the mail today, uh, and uh, we're going to take a look at that. It's an um, electronic variable speed motor for the Little Excelsior lathe. So um, we're going to do a non-turning project. We're going to do a motor installation project. So thanks for joining me. So here it is. This is what came in the mail. Let's take a look at that. What is it? Oh, yeah. It's a little uh, electronic variable speed motor assembly that I'm going to put on that Excelsior lathe and move that from a manual speed change up to electronic variable speed. So uh, let's take a look at how that works out. Well, this is what's in the box. Am I going to do an unboxing? No. But am I going to show you that everything came? Yes. So it looks like we have all the parts. Let's go ahead and put this thing on the Excelsior. Here's the electronic controller unit. Uh, it looks good. Um, this is interesting. I didn't think I saw that pictured on the website, but it appears to be uh, room for some uh, a big old heat sink there. So this must be for cooling. So, awesome. Uh, I'm going to just pull off this uh, panel. Looks like this might get repurposed onto here. So I'm going to check that out and see if that's really what the intent is. There's the old motor. That's a pretty big honking motor for a half horse. Um, and the switch box with the face plate off it. I'm going to put that in storage in case I need it again. Now up here is the new controller unit. I've got the new motor mounted up under there. A little smaller. Um, fits well. I'm going to take you around the back. You can see this. So there's the pulley system, there's the pulleys on the bottom. Right now I've got it in the middle of the range. Okay, so uh, it's all plugged in. And let's give her a test fire. It's on slow power. Ooh, look at that. Interesting. It'd be interesting to know what the speed range is on this, but I don't have a tachometer on this one. Seems to be running okay. Pair that down. All right. So that says middle belt. I'm assuming that I'm looking at this properly. Uh, I should be in the 1250 to 2800 range. So now I just need to find a way to mount this onto here. And that hasn't readily presented itself to me. I might have to make a little panel to act as an interface. I thought maybe I could use this one. And I don't know, I maybe need to explore that option. So we'll take a look at that next. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and attach this back plate to the switch box um, onto this cover panel for the lathe. And so I have used a marker to locate some holes um, that I can put the screws through that are going to act as the mount. And... Uh, so I'm going to drill those out and uh, see if we can hang this thing off the side of the lathe. If you have this Excelsior lathe, this motor was a direct bolt-up. Um, I didn't have to do any drilling. I didn't have to change the uh, mounting plate or anything like that. This thing just bolted right in. Now this is the only part that seems to need a little bit of um, uh, accommodation. 
So this part is a grounding screw, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and reattach that. Shows you right there, there's a little grounding sticker. Okay, so this is going to go back on here. And the reason I drilled the hole for this one is because it actually does protrude through the other side. So all these grounds Good. Now, so I just needed to see what that was all about. What I'm going to do is put this back together, and this plate now should go right here. See how that locates right there? Uh, a little off camera. Let me get you down here. So there's the hole for the grounding screw. And these will line up with these holes up here for these screws. So I'm going to put this together and bring it back on in a minute. Well, guys, here it is uh, assembled. So I could probably machine on the edges of this if I wanted to. This casting interferes with the back of the, the nuts um, for these uh, small bolts that go through here. Um, but you know what? I get enough purchase of threads. I'll show you how that comes off. There is plenty of purchase for the threads on this to hold this in place. Okay, so that's now it's mounted to that plate um, by these two things at the top. So that's actually enough to hold it there. I mean, it's not structural or anything. So these will fit back on where they go. Now you probably do notice I've removed this little cover from the bottom. Okay. Um, I'm going to see if that's a bad idea in the long run, but since this helps this sit lower, um, I think it's going to be just fine. Like I said, um, you don't need a whole lot to hold this into place. Um, there's nothing in here that's going to be bothered by the little gap that's left. I could make some foam or something to fill that in if I wanted to. Um, anyway, so let's fire that up. There it is. Wind it out. Shut her off. So that was a really fast project. Um, I should have timed it because I think it took me like 10 minutes. Well, Turners, thanks for joining me on the other side of the workbench with the little Excelsior lathe and the uh, quick motor swap out for the electronic variable speed. Uh, that was from uh, Penn State Industries. Got it with a coupon, so it uh, sent me back about $110, and that included... Uh, uh, no, it didn't. I take that back. Um, uh, it was $120 with the shipping because it was $10 uh, for shipping. So uh, we're going to uh, do another video at another point. So this is primarily my pen lathe. I will... Uh, most likely be doing a pen turning video in the near future. We'll give this one a shot and see how it performs with this new motor. Thanks for joining me.